It's rather small and rather unimpressive, the Sonore Micro Rendu Network Audio Adapter. Until you start listening, be warned, watching this video might cost you. It measures only 55 by 90 by 70 mm, holds a DC power in and LAN connector on one side and a micro SD card slot and a USB A port on the other side. The only thing it does is receive audio packets over the local network, recondition the data and send it out over a synchronous USB to the DA converter. Something any computer, including the mini computers like the Raspberry Pi can do. But at a price of 640 US dollars, you expect it to do substantially better than a Raspberry Pi. Well it does, big time. The Micro Rendu is a so called NAA, a network audio adapter. Look at it as a remote connection point for your DAC. Instead of sending the audio data to the USB port of your computer, it is sent to the network audio adapter's network input, where it is translated to a USB output. There are many programs that can send audio data to network audio adapters, but they might use all kinds of protocols. The Micro Rendu supports the most popular ones and calls them output modes, where in fact they are more protocol modes. It can function as a squeeze box player, supporting true gapless playback of PCM and DSD over DOP or as AirPlay station that outputs gapless PCM. Since the AirPlay protocol is limited to 48 kHz, that will be the limit here too. A third mode is aimed at the UPnP AV, DNLA and Open Home standards. It supports two variants, DNLA output and MPD output and does gapless playback of PCM. DSD over DOP and native DSD. The fourth mode is for working with Signalist HQ player and the fifth mode is the Rune Ready Output, also known as Rune Endpoint. It is an impressive versatility for such a small box. How difficult will it be to install? The Sonora website holds a small user manual that start with some remarks on the power supply that has to be bought separately. I use the new S-Booster 5 to 6 volt BOTW PMP Eco switch to 6 volts. An AudioQuest Cinnamon USB to micro USB cable connected it to the cord Hugo. By the way, I had some questions about the use of AudioQuest micro USB cables together with portable decks like the cords and the Celsius sound, since the plug is too big. Have your dealer order an adapted cable that will fit the DAC better. AudioQuest then trims down the micro USB and covers it in shrink tubing, but I digress. According to the manual, I have to wait 45 seconds for the unit to boot and then go to the website sonicorbiter.com. There you see what compatible players and servers are available in your network. Simply click on the Manage button to open the settings page of the Micro Rendu. Choose the settings tab and you can choose the setup that suits your need. I chose Rune Ready here and after clicking Save Changes, the Micro Rendu appears immediately in the audio settings in Rune. After giving it a name and checking the settings, I was ready to play. It took me two minutes the most. To test out the other modes, I switched to the squeeze light and used Rune again to use it as a squeeze box. Then I activated the DNA mode, started up J River Media Center 21 and was directly able to play from J River. I don't have a license for HQ player yet, so I was not able to test that mode, but given the ease and robustness in the other modes, I can't imagine the HQ player protocol would be less. As always, you can skip the tech by jumping to the timecode above. The difference between good sound and very good sound, delivered by a network audio adapter and the like, lies in the perfect timing and very low pollution of the signal and thus 
the power supply. As said, the latter was covered by using the new S-Booster power supply. The only signal that comes in is the network signal. Here a high quality APHC network socket with integrated transformers is used to have galvanic separation. Remains the clocking and reconditioning. For this an IMX dual light processor is used since it has many different power supply domains. For each domain the optimal regulation scheme is used according to the manufacturer and I quote. For example the processor domain uses a high quality switching regulator since it needs a low voltage at high current. The on chip PLLs which generate the clocks for all the different systems are run off a low noise regulator. The USB subsystem takes three supplies all of which are fed by an ultra low regulator. In addition the chip can be fed an external clock that bypasses the internal oscillator circuit which is not particularly low jitter. The reference clock of the PLLs can be changed to point at the external clock input to which I feed a very low jitter main clock. End of quote. The Sonic Orbiter operating system is used by Sonore for other products including the cheaper network audio adapter called Sonic Orbiter SE. However, it has been specially compiled for the hardware of the micro Rendu. And for those counting the hertzes, PCM sampling rates up to 768 kHz and DSD up to 512 is supported, although there are not many DACs around that also support these extremely high sampling rates. Your DAC must at least support USB Audio Profile 1 to be able to play and is then limited to 96 kHz. If your DAC supports USB Audio Profile 2, the setup is limited to the highest sampling rate the DAC can handle. Normally I would now describe how to operate a unit, but in this case there really is nothing to report on since it functionally equals a direct connection to the DA converter. Sound wise it's a different story. The galvanic separation, clean power and reconditioned signal appears to be as clean as I ever heard in my set 1. The Court Hugo is built for portable use where ground loops are unlikely to occur. No special measures against this were taken and thus has the Hugo a USB input that is more sensitive to ground loops and other mishaps. This is why I prefer using the SPDIF inputs over transformer decoupled SPDIF outputs. The micro Rendu only has a single USB output and no SPDIF, so I had to use the USB input on the Hugo. To my big surprise this sounded better, really better than any other setup I have used with the Hugo. It even sounded better than the Hugo TT that does have galvanic separation. Transients are more defined, the image is more natural, there is more space between the instruments, the low end is very clean, it's just more real. I get reactions from people that think that since we are talking bits here, there can't be any difference in sound quality. Those people I advise to watch my video connecting your deck number 2, how digital can go wrong. See the link in the top right corner. The micro rendu shows what the result is when every done, everything is done very well. It's an odd combination of boxes I use for this review. The tiny micro rendu, the small cord and the huge S booster power supply. A combination of about 2600 euros that I consider to deliver a very good price performance ratio. The big surprise here being the micro rendu. It is this kind of product that makes me worry about my credibility. How come that others don't make equal products? Can there be such a big difference? Well, it might be clear that I think it's possible. But if there's a viewer that knows of an equal or better product, please let me know. And if there is a manufacturer that thinks he has an equal or better product, he is quite welcome to contact me and I will certainly review his product. No buys and no cost other than shipping. And certainly no ties between editorial and ads. Not on this channel. So 
all reasons to su subscribe to this channel or follow me at Facebook, Google Plus or Twitter. You can also post questions, but please view my questions video first. See the link in the top right corner. You'll find more information in the show notes below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. Mm -hmm.